The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, Thursday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we have markets barely in the red this morning. All of them in the red, though. S&Ps negative by about nine points right now, trading at 45.19. Early yesterday, got within about 20 points of all-time highs on the S&P. We give up some of those gains. NASDAQ 100 off by about 35 points this morning, down two-tenths percent. 15,344. You get the Dow off 84 points right now, 35,393. And the Russell negative by just three. Bitcoin, quite the volatile session yesterday. We make an all time high of 67,006. Excuse me, what is that high? 67,680. We get back almost to 67,000 again early this morning. We reached 66,960. We get a little bit of a sell off there at 730. We trade from 66,250. You trade down 1,500 bucks. We're technically negative, $1,475 on the session in Bitcoin. Crude, quite the acceleration yesterday, almost made it to $84, $83.96, the high overnight. We're trading at $83.10 right now. Gold contract down $2 at $17.83. We check around to silver, down 13 cents right now. We jump to notes and bonds. We got the 10-year right now, negative by eight ticks. We're trading at 130.12. You take a look at the yield right now. We're talking about a yield. I think we're above 1.7%. No, we're at one point, excuse me, I was going to say above 1.67%. We're at 1.66% right now. On the 10-year, 130.12. The 30-year is negative 12 ticks at 157.24. And as we jump around to what else we have going on, we jump over to the VIX. The volatility index this morning, 1585, up from a low of 1529 just yesterday. Low volatility in this market. A little bit of elevated action right now. As we have a market trading slightly lower, but still under 16. With everything going on in this market, pretty low volatility priced in uh, as we're near all-time highs. And the economy facing a lot of pressure right now. But earnings delivering so far, even early into the season. It's Thursday, 8.30 a.m. We get the jobless numbers. 290,000. Uh, that was down 6,000 from the previous week. Previous week was 296, below the 300,000 estimate. Continuing claims dropped to a new pandemic low, falling to 2.48 million. For the first time filings, 290,000, down 6,000. You look at the trend, the trend is lower. We're almost at a healthy number, even in a functioning, healthy economy. You're going to get some churn. You're going to get a number between about 200 and 300,000 on a weekly basis of an initial claim. You could make the argument argument with everything going on that it shouldn't have the normal churn that you normally do uh, as in that number could even dip a little bit lower because of the number of people lost their job in the last year and a half the number of people that should be getting their jobs back as this economy gets back to some form of normalcy uh, so you could make that argument that we should see even lower numbers than 290 coming out of this considering the number of what we've had going back to even just the beginning of this year right in january i mean we were we were having numbers of 900,000 in january uh, and it's been a slow decline since then, but we're coming into October. And there's your continuing claims as you see that dropping off as well. Um, the total of those receiving benefits under all state and federal programs fell by 369,000 to 2.8 million uh, a year ago. That number, 23.8 million. A big chunk of that was on the federal uh, stimulus plan in terms of uh, em emergency unemployment benefits. Four-week moving average, 319,000. Weekly claims peaked at 6.15 million, an amazing number in April of 2020. Nonetheless, uh, the market marches on. We're down eight points right now as we come into things. And let's just jump into the equities moving. We got a comp bunch of companies out with their numbers. We'll start it off with Tesla. Strong numbers from Tesla last night. We're going to open within about $7 of where we were last night. We'll see where the market opens. Always interesting to see where supply actually meets demand. Once things accelerate, we're trading at 857.51. You had the close yesterday about 865. Tesla were pretty decent numbers. We'll get into those. Let's jump down the line in terms of what we're looking at. 
excuse me, one second. And I'm going to scroll to the top here. Where is my Tesla update? I had it up here, and I think I closed it right before I came on. So we'll get into that one a little bit uh, after we talk to Mr. Kevin Hinks. But we got a bunch of other companies out with their numbers. Blackstone higher this morning. I mean, it's almost beats across the board right now. AT&T is higher. They beat by $0.09, cents, adjusted quarterly profit of $0.87. Cents. Revenue comes in above forecast, seeing growth in demand for its phone and Internet service, as well as HBO and HBO Max. Uh, I would say HBO is a great uh, value proposition, but, man, they are expensive. It's tough when you're competing with the likes of Netflix and Disney. Uh, HBO, I think it's something like 15, 20 bucks a month on HBO. Outstanding programming, uh, but they're in a tough sector. AT&T, a lot more going on than what is going on in HBO. But you see the real volatility in this equity. Yeah, you're getting a bounce today. You're 30 cents higher. We just traded from 29 bucks in May down to 25 bucks uh, for AT&T coming into that number. So Blackstone, higher in a big way. Uh, earnings, a buck 28. Market was only looking for 91 cents. Strong investment for performance. BX is their symbol. And talk about uh, an acceleration. You're going to be opening at 132 on the open this morning. We have a high of 136. This thing has just been nonstop uh, from 60 bucks to start the year. You were trading at 136 in September. You're going to be coming right up to those numbers. Maybe you fill that gap that we had back from September in Blackstone. Crocs, I want to talk about. How about Crocs? It just does not stop for Crocs. Uh, is that it? No. CROX. So we're going to open at 150 on Crocs. You got a high here at 163. You really want to see a chart, folks. There's your three year weekly down to eight bucks in the COVID lows. You come into 2020 at a price of 40 bucks. You're pushing 163 and you're going to open today at 150. Uh, and take a look at the long term chart of this thing. Yeah, things get out of hand in 2007. Crocs, they almost died down to 79 cents. You almost die again down to single digits. Um, from man, talk about a long time, right? Crocs going out of fade, but man, they are back in a big way. You got a little bit of a spike coming into 2020, and it's just been quite an acceleration to the upside in a big way. All right, what else we have going on, folks? You're jumping around to where we are. Uh, IBM out with their numbers beat estimates by two cents with adjusted quarter earnings of 252 revenue fell below analyst forecast amid some weakness in the company's cloud business and pullback in client spending. IBM slid 5% in pre market trading IBM is their symbol. And you're going to be down about seven bucks. There's the drop off on their numbers last night. Now IBM this has been a tough one man uh, up to 152. Jumping back to where we are, though. I mean, look at these trend lines, folks. Watch this. That's the five-year weekly. And there's your max. And we're just bumping right there, and you're going to open lower. Uh, you commit to that earnings events. Now, this is a monthly, folks, going back to 2013. Okay? But, man, I'd keep my eye on that channel line. If you're on IBM, I would want to see a break above that channel line. And right now, you have this thing bumping up against the channel line as you commit to earnings and they miss and you're going to trade lower and if you ever trade to the bottom of this channel line folks watch out because you're talking about we'll extend it to the right you talk about eighty dollars on this equity and you're going to open at 135 don't think that's out of the question folks on ibm uh when you're in a channel line that is straight and down to the right all right folks stay tuned we'll be coming back we'll be talking to our man kevin hinks we'll go over those tesla numbers a bit later in the program as well we got chipotle mexican grill uh, with their numbers tonight stay tuned folks i'll be right back Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? 
That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 8 right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by 34. The Dow negative by 74. All the markets were negative, but we're right near an all-time highs, basically. You get the Russell uh, in quite a little consolidation for itself. The Russell, you get the upper boundary line. The highs, you're talking about all the way back in March of 2366. You're trading right now at 2285 in the Russell. Jumping around to some of the equities with action this morning. Taking a look at Tesla. Tesla. Uh, with their numbers last night and as i say coming pretty close you're talking about nine dollars the expected move there about 30 35 bucks when you get into the weekly move uh we'll just jump over even uh if you take a look, uh, $28 was priced into the actual earnings event. If you go out to the weekly options, which is how you would really trade that. So, you know, it's always nice when you have the expected move tied to an event and that's what the one day market maker expected move in yellow here folks that appears we've had kevin on and i think we're going to get him uh in terms of when the applied volatility of the forward month comes in front of the months outside of it and you know when you're trading though the weekly options that expire october 22nd you got a 28 dollar move priced for their earnings but really i'm looking at sometimes you have a 37 dollar move priced for the options right because you're buying them maybe wednesday through friday you really want to know if you hold them um you only have two days in there so that number sometimes more important than the move but if you're trading out a week or trading out a month or something like that let's say you want to go out to the december number i mean look at the move that comes out in tesla and yeah tesla talk about some volatility you go out to the november numbers okay you got a 97 dollar move priced in that's when it is nice to know okay you got a 97 dollar move priced in for implied volatility through november 19th of that 97 dollar move almost 30 dollars of it is tied to the earnings event that we got last night that's going to get sucked out right away now it'd be interesting okay at 9 30 let's check back on this all right 9 30 what's going to happen is we got a 97 dollar move priced in all of these are going to get recalibrated when the options market opens and the 97 dollars uh should get sucked out to the tune of about 30 bucks maybe we'll see the november monthly expiration we'll check back and see how that number correlates as we open um and you just don't know how that may play out we may see see a rising vix that could hurt things uh but nonetheless we have that implied volatility right there uh and we'll see how tesla opens down about nine bucks right now from where we were yesterday and some pretty decent earnings overall living up to some of the expectations of the run it had recently all right folks let's jump over to our man kevin hinks from td ameritrade fast market every trading day noon eastern time kevin 
Hanks, Tom White, the team at the TD Ameritrade Network, walking you through the market action, setting up hypothetical trades, talking about defined risk, talking about earnings season. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, lots of earnings coming out, lots of, you know, pretty interesting stuff, Tommy, as even the airlines that we were very worried about their numbers and everything, even they're beating on some lowered numbers. And that may be exactly what this earnings season is starting to turn into, right? It's like It feels like during the month of September, some of the expectations were ratcheted lower, and we're beating those lower expectations. So that that's okay too, Tommy. As we as you know, a lot of earnings are just about expectations and the and the actual versus the expectations. So so far so good. Real good jobless claims uh, data this morning after the big drop last week. It held that number. I think that's real good to start the day. But no real serious economic data this week to rattle the markets. But uh, lots of earnings, Tommy. It is remarkable how the conversation can change so quickly, right, Kevin? I mean, man, it's almost like no matter what media organization, what newspaper you opened for the month of September, it was talking about how are these companies going to earn a profit with rising wages, with supply constraints, with the market at all-time highs across the board, with multiples getting a little funky to the upside. Um, and all of a sudden, man, we're, we're into earnings season with some big companies already out. And we got the S&P right now, Kevin, within 30 points of all-time highs as that conversation shifts, man. And we got some decent numbers out there. Tesla um, living up to the expectations, just kind of like Netflix, as in just quite a run it's had recently. They come out with the numbers, and Tesla's within right now. We'll see how they open, Kevin, but within about 9 bucks from where we closed yesterday. What's your take on the Tesla action there uh, after quite the run it's had? And they're they a pretty, pretty low-volatile event considering the run that Tesla's had and the volatility it had sometimes. Both names, Tesla and Netflix, right, have both had amazing historic runs into their earnings events. And at least Netflix is holding right now. And Tesla is it closed at eight sixty five. It's only about down ten bucks. That's nothing. That's a that's a in the famous words of Monty Python, that's a flesh wound, Tommy. <laughs> that, I mean that, that's not a big move at all for a stock like Tesla and the numbers that they've been putting up. So that's telling you that this stock is holding where it is and you know this, this it, it continues to defy gravity and its ability to grow and even in a tough car market it continues to grow it's still a fraction tommy of some of these auto automakers but the potential and the ability for this company to grow and beat expectations is what keeps the stock at its lofty levels it's pretty cool man i mean talk about the haters on elon musk and he's kind of oh. um yeah, put put them all in their place, as in, and there was a there was a tumultuous couple of years there, and even Elon's talked about it himself, where they were on the cusp, you know, where they were pushing debt, they weren't quite there, they had to get the Model Three out, but yeah, in the last couple of years, man, they have really crushed it in a big way, and the stock price is showing it. Uh, we got the jobless claims number today, Kevin, two ninety. So we've talked about it before in a healthy economy, right? You're getting some churn, obviously, on a weekly basis. Maybe it's between two and three hundred thousand. As this market picks up, do you look for that number, Kevin? And I'm going out, you know, whether it's the next three or six months. Do you look for that number? And I know this is, I don't want to focus on it too much because it's not a big number in the grand scheme of things. But do you look for that number to come even lower because of kind of where we are, things aren't normal? Maybe as the, the, the economy really ratchets up, we won't have that type of churn. Do you ever look for that weekly initial, initial claim, maybe to get under 200,000 as this thing ratchets up? Or are we kind yeah, of where we want to be? during the pandemic, Tommy, we were up at about, we, we were down to about 220 in the mid 220s every week. So can it get closer to that? Yeah. Well, I think there'll be some scars from the pandemic that may prohibit us from getting back down there right away. Yeah, I also think that. But can yeah. we get back down to that 250 level? It certainly looks like we're working that way. And I think the month of October and the month of November are going to be pretty important in terms of people re-entering the workforce. If that happens, right, if that's happening, um, it should be happening in the next 30 to 60 days, I would think, Tommy. I agree, man. It's so cool the time we're in right now. We have a market near all-time highs. We're coming into the end of the year. Uh, tax selling is always a question. Not sure it's going to be the biggest question out there with everything else looming. Uh, but there's just a lot of variables in the next couple of months, whether it's job creation, uh, where we end up in inflation. The Fed's going to begin tapering. Pretty cool. And we have a VIX, Kevin, that's under historical norms, sitting at 1583 with everything going on this morning. I know we still got about a bunch of companies with earnings. What are you guys going to be talking about at Fast Market uh, at noon today, Kevin? 
three big ones today, Tommy. First, Intel, and then, like Foley, you'll do a presentation on Chipotle, and nice. then we'll finish up with Snap. So nice. we're all over the board today, but three really good high-profile companies. Yeah, Snap's an interesting one, man, for sure. And Chipotle, I'm going to be interested to take a look at. I mean, Snapchat seems like this company, man, when they wrote it off a while back, it's amazing. You go back to the end of 2018, you were at $4, almost like Snap wasn't going to exist. Uh, and you're trading today at 75 bucks. let alone just last year, you were in single digits of the COVID lows. And Chipotle, be interesting to see how they deal with some of the costs associated. You had uh, the parent company of... What was it? Chili's and Maggiano's out yesterday, right? Yeah. Eat, Brinker, yeah. down big. Um, and we'll see. Chipotle, if they can live it up. Chipotle, strong company, man, the way they're turning digital. Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, man. We look forward to the program at noon today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure, Kevin. Have a great one, man. Folks, tune in. Noon Eastern time, fast market, Intel, Chipotle, Snapchat. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the market open. We got markets barely in the red, but catching a little bit of a bit on that opening bell. S&P's down just six points right now. We got the Dow down 84, NASDAQ 100 down about 18 points right now. Excuse me, jumping around to what we have going on in terms of Tesla. Now, I got an opinion piece up here, but there's a lot going on in terms of where uh, 
they are with their numbers. The strategy of using a less expensive, more practical battery now being rolled out globally, getting more cars on the road faster, ultimately will win the EV race. Now, this is an opinion article out there this morning, but the margins really did grow, go up on Tesla. And I have to find the exact numbers on here. I had it up earlier in an article I was looking at, and I'll get it up again later. Um, but Tesla had some strong margins in terms of what they were coming out with. And look at that. You're within six bucks of where you closed yesterday, folks. 859 on Tesla right now. We closed yesterday at 865. Quite a run there. Jumping around some of the other companies with their numbers that are opening up, you got Blackstone up 2.8% on their numbers. Now, Unilever, all right, this is an interesting one, up 9 tenths percent today. Uh, you get into the fundamentals of this company, consumer goods company, all right, personal care, and you're talking about everything in here, folks. You're talking about whether it's uh, soup, bullion, snacks, mayonnaise, salad dressing, they got it all in there. Uh, they had, I heard the CEO out there talking this morning, now, you got Hellman's in there, well, she got sun silk, um, ice cream. They are raising prices in a big way. And they were talking about inflation tendencies persisting for the better part of about 12 months, uh, as in it takes a cycle to do that. Uh, they put it in terms of basically an inflationary cycle that you only see every couple decades, uh, potentially. But the CEO is just making a lot of sense out there, basically saying, hey, everything's going up. OK, inflation's here. All right, we're going to raise our prices because there's no way about it. Got to do it. And if that's happening across the board, OK, you're getting a recalibration. Now, things could subside in a year. Man, a year is a long time. OK, we've been talking about transitory for how long? Six months, maybe a year already. And then it's going to be another year. How long is transitory? Is it two to three years? I don't know. But we're going to find out, folks. Uh, all right. Other companies out with numbers. American Air out with their numbers. Kevin was talking about it um, as we kicked off the program. You Losing less than expected despite rising costs. Fuel expenses tripled in the third quarter to $1.95 billion. Revenue seen 20% below two years earlier. Excuse me. Not bad. Uh, not bad at all in terms of we still have a long way to go for people feeling comfortable for travel, especially for international travel. And they're at revenue that's that's only 20% away from where they were two years ago, which is a, a form of normalcy. I imagine when things really ratchet up and people are still taking trips, and this is gonna persist. All right, the pent up demand from living almost, what are we pushing? We're pushing almost two years, right? That we've been through COVID. We're at a year and a half now. The pent up demand is going to last years, I imagine, as well. All right. When you're thinking about traveling, once we get over this hump, folks, all right, you're going to have kids that have the ability to get vaccinated soon, which will be great. Because let me tell you, as a family with kids, all right, uh, you still have to be a little bit more cautious, in my opinion, than if you're vaccinated yourself, because unfortunately, they haven't had that option trying to avoid uh, the kids getting it before they have that option. Once you get over that and everybody can just be carefree. That really opens the door to some serious demand. So American loss came in at 641 million. The analysts were looking for a loss of a buck oh three a share. They lost 99 cents. Revenue nearly tripled from a year earlier. Now a year earlier, not even to to look at because it was so bad. Almost nine billion. They were supposed to come in at almost nine billion. Uh, as they said, fuel costs dramatically higher. It expects to pay as much as 2.48 a gallon for fuel, up from an average of 2.07 in the third. Warning about higher costs this coming quarter. I mean, just this quarter alone, from last quarter, prices were already rising last quarter. You're going to pay almost 25 percent more. You're paying 40 cents more, almost 20 percent more than they were paying last quarter. That is quite a number. Fuel line, jet fuel prices have doubled in the past year. Quite a number. And as of revenue, though, only 20 percent below. Uh, well, the rise of the COVID-19 Delta variant delayed some of the revenue recovery. It has not stopped our progress. Vast majority of employees have received the COVID-19 vaccination under the mandate for federal contractors. Most of the rest will get the shot by the November 24th deadline here. Uh, and they, I guess they had their preliminary results back October 12th. Now, interesting to see Pfizer and BioNTech, the booster debate out there. Now, it's interesting in terms of how this decides to get pushed out. Um, this is talking about the booster, that they have a study out there of 10,000 people aged 16 and older um, that have basically pushed the protection back up to full protection levels from the initial double shot. Excuse me. Now, it's unfortunate that 
the message has been muddled at best, pushing out boosters. Um, regulators have wrestled with how to widely use boosters as the Delta variant infections uh, rates up, drives the infection rates up. Some countries, such as Israel, pushing it out to everybody. Others, such as the U.S. and Europe, um, far more centralized in terms of who they're focusing on. But nonetheless, this looks like a pretty strong study, and I wonder if this will change uh, how that is applied in the U.S. and open things up a little bit more dramatic. The one thing that doesn't make sense, all right, and listen, I'm out there promoting vaccines, folks, in a big way. That's the way you're going to get over this, to, to protect yourself and those around you. They are safe. They are effective, okay? There are breakthrough cases, as we see, and it looks like um, as we navigate the science in real time, that yes, there is some waning efficacy as things go out. It might be something that, especially as cases are uh, proceeding, that they have boosters. Uh, but the message in terms of originally they said, oh, only people elderly or with weakened immune systems needed the booster. What contradicted that, okay, was the fact that then they said people in high risk, such as if, even if you worked in a grocery store, if you worked as a teacher or something like that, well, what makes no sense is that they said the people that were younger were fine, except if you are greater chance of exposure. Well, if you're fine anyway, then what's the difference of your exposure rate if you all have the same protection? OK, really what it spoke to was that they thought that there was some chance of waning efficacy and that if you had a greater chance of exposure, um, yes, you were still protected, it looks like, from severe disease, but breakthrough cases were more possible of waning efficacy. So then they decide to offer it to people in those situations. I mean, what that basically says is they're almost contradicting themselves that, yes, there is some waning efficacy, um, but they're only going to offer it to those that are more likely to be open to it. Where that gets confusing at best is that everybody has their own situation situation folks i have a household where i have two kids who are unvaccinated um i have a fiance that works in a hospital okay um so you have possible exposures many times we have kids that are unvaccinated going to school etc uh hopefully this will help settle that debate of the science as it moves forward in real time uh, we'll see. But nonetheless, you had Pfizer open positive and it's given back some of those gains as we're talking about it. Trading lower down about a half a percent on their open BioNTech. What is it? BioNTech. B-I-O-N. Is that it? BNTX. There it is. Nice for you. Uh, they're really getting a nice boost up 3.6% today on that news. Let's jump back to some of the stocks that are opening on their numbers. Tesla getting a shoot up to the upside, actually positive by about nine bucks right now to 875. We talked about Blackstone continuing to run higher, up about 3.6% right now. Chipotle with their numbers. And let's check back to Tesla. <coughs> Excuse me. And there it is, the November numbers now. $85 move priced in. That was $100 before the market opened. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And just like that, folks, the market is open and Tesla is running. Is that an all-time high? I do know. We made it to 900 at one point. 900.4. Tesla, though, trading higher right now. We're up to 886 on acceleration from about 860 on the open on their numbers. Uh, jumping around to what else we got going on. So if you are in the market to get fleeced, I have an investment for you from the former president of the United States. He has a special purpose acquisition corporation that he is pushing out to the public for a new social media company called Truth. And uh, you can be an investor in that company valued at $1.7 billion under the symbol D. W A C, uh, which is trading today up 28%. Folks, I kid because uh, if you feel like throwing away some money, this is a nice way to do it. Uh, this was announced yesterday uh, and already, folks. All right, so you're talking about Truth Social. Site's supposed to be in beta, valued at $1.7 billion, going out to the public with a SPAC. That way they can say anything they want, not be a regulatory approval. Uh, and already you have people on that site, even though you're not supposed to be doing it, creating handles under the name Donald Trump, uh, pushing things out to the public. They have a number of rules on that site. 23rd rule of Trump's planned social media site. You cannot disparage, tarnish, or otherwise harm in our opinion, us and or the site. So can't talk about anything bad about the site that's going to be all about truth on Truth Social. Uh, folks, everybody loves to say stick to the business, stick to finance. This is finance, folks, right there. They're pushing out to the public in the market as a regulated investment vehicle valued at $1.7 billion. And somebody was out there buying it at 4 a.m. this morning at 20 bucks. Well, they just lost a boat full, boat full of money. Uh, it's trading at $12.96. Buyer beware, to say the least, over there. All right. Jumping around to what else we got going on, jumping down the line of other articles we got up here, uh, stocks in terms of making moves. I talked about Unilever. Um, Dove Soap, Hellman's Mayonnaise, able to raise prices to offset higher input costs, but warned that it expects inflation to likely accelerate in 2022. I bring it up again, folks, because um, when, when you see this type of a company, which is consumer good facing across the board, okay, what you have to understand is that they have their hands on the pulse of the economy and what's going on, okay? And if you're talking about soap and mayonnaise going up and you're talking about that company realizing that that's going to accelerate next year, you better be ready in a big way um, for that one to take hold and for it to persist in a big way as well. Let's jump around to some of the other stocks that are opening on their numbers. Crocs. Uh, still up 10% on their numbers right now. Yeah, IBM out with their numbers right now, down 6.8. This thing's dropping out of bed, continuing. Tesla shares pushing even higher at 887 right now. What else do we have out with their numbers? Blackstone taking a look at Blackstone up 2.5% strong in a big way. 
All right, let's check around some of the FANG stocks right now. Talking about uh, Amazon right now, flat. And it's it's so crazy, folks. I, I hate to get sidetracked, but they're talking about it in the Tiger's Den. I bring up the vaccines, and of course, everybody goes crazy, um, saying it's experimental, it's rushed, it shouldn't be mandated. Very unfortunate where the conversation's going, folks. Okay? Um, you know, it's, it's, we live in a society that we've had vaccines forever. Kids have had vaccines and been required to go to school forever. Um, and it's really unfortunate this has become political, okay? Because they are safe, they are effective. We've required vaccines for school for as long as you can remember. Um, and I imagine that's gonna be coming down the line and everybody has their freedom of choice. Nobody just likes the consequences they deal with in those choices, okay? They don't like the consequences of their choices. They have choices. This is not the Gestapo mandating anything. It's people not liking the consequences of their freedom of choice. For the longest time, you don't need to send kids to school, okay, if you don't want to vaccinate them. But that means you homeschool them or you do your own deal, all right? In the beginning, it was that this was rushed, okay? It's an experimental drug. Well, we're at 6 billion plus doses of this vaccine given, six billion with a B. It's almost hard for the American, the, the, the human mind to comprehend six billion doses of this vaccine being pushed out. Um, so I don't believe it's a constructive conversation talking about mandating vaccines being somehow against freedom when it's something we've done forever. I mean, it's just a very, very unfortunate development. And uh, it is tied to the former president of the United States that got his mention earlier with his SPAC. Um, it's unfortunate that it's become political. And anti-vaccination tendencies span all political parties, folks, okay? There's plenty of tree hugger uh, liberals out in California that don't like vaccines, okay? But the political aspect that has caught on on this vaccine is not by chance and not by chance at all. So I encourage you, again, it's nothing political about it, folks. Get out there, get vaccinated for you, for your family. It is safe, it is effective. All right, jumping back to what else we got going on, jumping around to some of the stocks I like to take a look at. Uh, Disney getting a little bit of a boost today, but it's been quite a bullback. This 170 area, quite a little area of support here. Disney flirting with that area for the better part of, we're pushing back to December of last year. You trade down to that area again, you're up about nine tenths percent right now on Disney shares. Uber's had a little bit of a bounce from the lows we had uh, in September. You're trading at 46.72 right now on Uber. You're up 1.6 percent today. Uh, the cannabis stocks, man, they just struggle, struggle, struggle to find a bid. Uh, 1427, we did get a bid a couple days ago. We gave back some of that gain. I mean, this thing's just really struggling. Had some volume the last couple days, which is interesting on Canopy. You're up 1.2% today. All these markets climbing. Look at the Russell. Look at the Russell catching a bit. Let me look at this. Look at that pop on the Russell up to 2296. Taking a look at the Russell. We might climb above 2300 right now on the Russell as we climb. We're at 2296, NASDAQ 100 flat. S&P's minus five. I think Tesla's putting a little bit of a boost on there. Yeah, Tesla up 2.1% accelerating right now. Bitcoin shares. Uh, Bitcoin futures, I should say, right now, 65,500. We jump over to gold right now. Gold trading at 1783 right now. All right, what else did I have up here in terms of articles taking a look at? Uh, talked about Pfizer, talked about most of the stocks taking a move. Uh, you had AT&T uh, with their numbers. Let's see how they're moving at this morning. Holding on to some of the gains, but giving it up, you're up about seven tenths. I talked about this stock earlier. It's been quite a ride down for a while for uh at and so that could just be a dead cap bounce. Again, taking a look at the daily, right? Nothing too exciting to get excited over there as this thing's really fallen out of bed recently. IBM, yeah, CSX was out with their numbers last night as well, I believe. And they are trading higher. Yeah, out with their numbers last night. So CXX or CSX earns 43 cents a share, five cents above estimates, revenue exceeding estimates as well. Uh, driven by an increase in shipping volumes that was 3% above the strong year ago levels, and they are up almost 4%, 3.3% in the positive this morning. It was interesting yesterday the story came out, right, that uh, PayPal interested in buying Pinterest. So there's Pinterest, down 1.2%, but you opened yesterday at 56, we're trading at almost 62. Uh, PayPal, interesting that they had thinking about getting into that. And boy, they're giving it up again. Look at that, from 273 down to 260 on that potential news this morning. It recalibrates yet again down to 249. You take a look at this thing on a three-year weekly. You are now back to almost where we started 
the year of 2021. You give up all of the gains. We were up to 310. This is a strong company going forward, folks, and maybe that's a buying opportunity. But boy, be careful um, because this has had to run up from 100 bucks to 300. You're only at 250. I mean, you know, there's nothing saying this thing can't get back down to 200 bucks, even being a strong company in the future. But interesting, they go after Pinterest, a little bit of a diversification. Pinterest, maybe an undervalued uh, capitalization that they have going after. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now down just three points, trading at 45.24. Those tech stocks trading higher. NASDAQ up 10 points. Tesla charging higher in a big way. You're up 2.1%, up 18 bucks. The move expected was still about 30 bucks in Tesla, so only an 18, $18 move to the upside. Uh, on that index and jumping around the fang stocks amazon up half a percent right now you got microsoft up a third of a percent you got apple shares up about a tenth netflix on the heels of their earnings accelerating higher up 1.75 percent for netflix shares we jump to google shares down two tenths percent and facebook shares right now down two tenths percent as well at 340 dollars we jump to commodities crude holding pretty well at 8271 gold right now pretty tame action at 1781 we jump over to the volatility index right now the vix trading at 1568 pretty interesting we come in two uh pretty volatile earnings season expected and we got a vix that is under historical norms now we jump to chipotle mexican grill they'll be out with their numbers after the bell tonight folks you got a 70 fall 
a $74 move priced into the earnings event. Well, now what's cool is you got a $74 move priced to the earnings event. You got an $80 move for the week. So basically, $6 will be the move that's priced in tomorrow after we find out everything that has to do with earnings, basically being all that volatility priced in for the earnings event tonight. You're coming into that event at $1,828. The high was $1,958. This thing has been quite a run from the lows of $415 back in last March. Uh, we'll call them the COVID lows. You came into 2020 at about 850. The thing that'll be interesting about Chipotle. They are a strong company and they got a great business plan. Um, they're building some delivery units, uh, excuse me, some drive-through units. I forget what they call it. They have a specific name for their drive-throughs that are only available for those that order online for pickup. You can't like pull up through the drive-through and have to order, right? Because guess what? That's decades ago technology, folks. Nobody wants to wait in line behind you while you have to order. You have to order online, you drive through, you pick it up. That's a recipe for future success in a big way. But what may happen is what are the costs going to be associated with the business they're doing? That's what I'm interested in finding out tonight with Chipotle numbers. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in, starting your day with me. Stay tuned. We've got a man, Basil Chapman, up next. We have our man, Larry Pezzamento, live at 11. Fast market at 12. You heard it. They'll be talking Snapchat. They'll be talking Chipotle. They'll be talking Intel as well. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien all this afternoon. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great Thursday.